Eight. Oh, Ten. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to the stream scene. I just juked out the whole cast by telling them they had more time than they did, uh, because that's how I like to do things. <laughs> We've got an awesome episode for you guys today. We're going to be taking your questions and talking about select topics about streaming. So pretty much an open format. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll start taking your questions in a few minutes. But first, let me introduce you to my awesome, spectacular, wonderful co-host, The Hunter me. Wild. I, I never Whoa. get to you, okay? <laughs> How's it going, Hunter? I think the title just needs to keep on growing know, over time. His <laughs> is, is always like 10 <laughs> words long. It's like... I have all these adjectives. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, going, it's, going pretty, it's going pretty well. Although, no, today's the whole day of the Mondays. It's been mm. such a weird day, but a beautiful one. I'm very, a lot of tech very issues. Happy a lot of issues. A lot of tech issues. All, all kinds of stuff all over there. Today, we're, we are doing that uh, very open format, conversational and Q&A thing. This is my favorite type of show. Uh, so contrary to all expectations, uh, I'm definitely for all of our other shows. I'm never excited. This one I'm super excited for. This goes like right to the top of the list. Thank you so much, Ryan and Katie for, for joining us today. If y'all wouldn't mind, uh, introducing yourselves, uh, <laughs> tell us who you are, uh, where we they can know what's you, about what, to happen, what, what you do, <laughs> what you're about. Go for well, it. Well, I think we agreed that we're just going to sit here in silence, in awkward silence, and <laughs> find out who's going to talk about themselves first. Who can resist the longest? <clears throat> no, I was I was told that I had to go first. So, uh, okay, so I've been a game developer for over 10 years. I uh, worked at Activision and Treyarch on the Call of Duty series, and then was at Telltale Games for nearly seven years. And... Uh, working on cinematic and kind of various stories. But while doing that, I found Twitch because I figured out, hey, look, a lot of gamers are playing our games and want to see what they like and more often dislike about the stuff that we're doing. So kind of got an introduction into all that and started, found out about Extra Life actually at the same time. So I literally started a channel on here just to kind of help out with charity in the meantime. And uh, when everything unfortunately happened to Telltale, Look towards wifey and said, hey, mind if I try the, the super secure thing of going full time on Twitch? <laughs> Which there is the surest, there's no chances whatsoever with this and I'll be able to take care of us no problem. And she, uh, she thankfully put a lot of trust in me and said, yep, go ahead. And here we are two years, two years later. That's awesome. So, yeah, yeah. Sweet. Katie, what about you? Um, I've been streaming for four, four-ish years on Twitch now. I uh, play a lot of different games. I I started Twitch specifically um, because my husband's in the military and I needed a job that can be moved so I can go anywhere with internet. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> I started it just as a hobby and then I realized this this is amazing and I started really enjoying myself. I I focus a lot on charity streaming. Um I have a stream team that's focused directly for that as well. Um called Project Kindness and I, I really enjoy the charity streamer um all the, the all the aspects of that. Um I play lots of different games but I my heart is in the apocalyptic games. I love <laughs> Seven Days to Die, you know, Left 4 Dead, all of those. Um, but then, of course, Animal Crossing lately. You know, I can't, can't have that. that um, funny. It's a little apocalyptic. <laughs> What's yeah, wrong with you know, the bunny? Especially if you have Tarantula Island. Oh, yeah. It gets, all, it gets all quiet and creepy when you're not, like, next to it. It gets I just tired. Know it's just it's from I'd be tired around. jumping yeah. all day too. You gotta take a break. You know people see me when I when I'm quiet and tired. That's what I do <laughs> after the stream. When you know I hit stop streaming, I'm just like it's power down. There was, like, I'm like there was one time as a as a brief interjection to that. There was one time that I went to like end the stream and I didn't switch off my main cam and my face went totally like plastic, <laughs> right? And people in chat were like. He looks so furious. I wouldn't want to meet him in an alley. <laughs> That's happened to me before too. <laughs> I was like, it's so weird. Yeah, no, I think uh, I think that's interesting. Like, I, I saw that meme going around one time. Just like, yeah, no, it's such a thing though. Like, the second you hit stop streaming, you're just like exhausted. You're just like <laughs> all energy drains from my face. <laughs> Mouth open, like. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, so we will take your questions in chat. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to, uh, you know, just throw it in chat and we'll try to grab them as we go. Uh, but we also have our own topics that we want to talk about. And yeah. I think the best one to start with is something that you guys both have in common, which is charity streaming, something that's like a big part of your channels. Um, you know, especially right now, there's a lot more charity streams happening because of COVID. So do you guys have any yeah, yeah. Um, tips for starting uh, someone's first charity stream? Uh, well, oh, yeah. I went first last time, Katie, so I feel like you should go first this time. <laughs> There. Oh, okay, me. Oh, oh no. <laughs> All right. Um, first charity stream. Well, you do. What I found really helpful uh, when I first started charity streaming, I kind of just went for all the charities. Like, oh, that's great one. Because let, let let's be mm. honest, all the charities are wonderful charities. Well, most of them. But I, you want to raise for all of them. But at some point, you have to narrow it down to what are what means the most to you. And I narrowed it down to animal shelters. That is what, something that I am passionate about because the more passionate about um, that particular charity, uh, the better it is for you and for your community um, to kind of uh, attach to that. Um, so the first thing would be to pick what are you passionate about? Do you have a particular cancer that runs in your family? And that is something that you would really like to work towards as far as research and help for them then find out that charity find out um, the reviews on it and make sure that it's a solid charity and you know most of its money goes towards what it needs to go towards and then reach out to them a lot of them have twitters they they all have emails that are specific for getting a hold um, of them they if you go to their website uh, so you can use the right email and just kind of and get a hold of them. And everyone's really nice. And you know, it's their job for, at those emails to get back to you and with that particular information and then just chat back and forth. And then you can plan an event. You do want to plan it at least a month out if you can. Um, so to give some warning, make some graphics and all that. But that's the main main thing as far as, as starting for the first, so first charity. When you're talking about the reviews, this is something I have experience with, but I'll let y'all answer. Um, when you're talking about the reviews, how does how does that work? What what matters and where do people go to see how that the financial distribution works uh, for those companies uh, or, or for those organizations, I should say? And um, what are we what are we looking for when it comes to, to, to picking them, finding online reviews and whatnot? They are um, obligated to put their financial information out there. So if you go to their actual website, you can look around and usually find the, all of their financial records, taxes, all that stuff, um, just right up there on their website. And you can check that out and kind of see what they use towards marketing and, and where they, how many donations they get and what they put that towards. You can usually see right on their website. 98% like uh, administrative and marketing 2% actually goes to the purpose of the charity. Might yeah, I, I wouldn't that. donate to that. Exactly. <laughs> Might not be a good amount on that one. Okay. Yeah, And I, I would even go so far to say is because uh, like before everything blew up, of course, with COVID and whatnot, there was the Australian fires mm. yeah, that were yeah. going on. And uh, I actually had a, a few friends reach out that they wanted to start helping out with certain things with charity wise. But you come across that you also want to make sure none of the money is touching your hands. That if you're raising things for and they don't have anything set up. So that's where I literally reached out to Tiltify to my contacts there and said, hey, let me put you guys in the same email. Um, here's what these people are wanting to doing. Here's Tiltify. You guys talk. And Casper, he's an amazing dude. And so he's just like, I got you. And, uh, and, and they got the chance to talk and they could set things up then. So then that way you have the power of Tiltify and everything that they can bring with alerts and, you know, on the streaming side and then making sure that a caster isn't touching those funds it's not right. going to paypal it's not mm -hmm. yeah exactly so because also if you think about it even if the caster's on the up and up that's still a lot of money that's being lost in all those transitions you know uh that are happening so a lot of fees yeah transaction so fees. it's it's one of the things yeah. to make sure that it's it's 100 going towards that that charity mm -hmm. and having to work the taxes on your side too when the money's going through your business and then out to um mm -hmm. charity that that also gets awkward just leave that out just right. leave, let yeah. them do all that work they they're built for it yeah 
Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, I mean, and on my end, I've typically helped out a lot with, you know, of course, the, the, the kind of bigger guys have been now a, an ambassador for extra life. So uh, this is extra life week, actually. So I'm going to be show hosting and shout casting uh, tomorrow, Wednesday and Thursday, because they've of course turned everything to be an online yeah, yeah. event. So uh, that was of course what a lot of also charities are trying to scramble to do that have had events is how do we take those physical events and turn into a online situation? And so that's also going to be the interesting thing is try and help out where and when we can and, and, and explain what's going on. And, and just to kind of build off what Katie was saying, you know, when it came to reaching out to charities, if you end up supporting something, say extra life and you're choosing a children's hospital, also make sure to reach out to your local children's hospital and build that rapport with them. So then that way you get to, you get to know your champions, your kids that are in the area and and that kind of stuff. Now, of course, with COVID-19, you can't really go hanging out at any place right now. But when this is past, when, yeah. when this is in the past, uh, the would highly recommend. Exactly. Awesome. And uh, so when you guys do your charity streams, how mm -hmm. do you go about planning them out? Because I think that's like a really daunting thing when someone's planning their first charity stream. They don't know like how long it should be or what type of incentives to do or like what even what oh goals they should set. Do you guys have any ideas for uh, planning a charity stream? Should I should I do my 128 hour stream for charity? <laughs> no, I would prefer you not to kill yourself for charity. Hunter. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I kind of like you living is, yeah. is a preference. Um, it's a, it really depends because I mean, as Katie even said, she's in charge of a charity team. I'm in charge of the charity team. And so like depending on if it's a team event or a personal event, those two things can also make it vastly different on how you're planning. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, so bottom line is, as Katie even said, a month out is a good number to have uh, to to start getting marketing out, let people know like, hey, save up for this. We're going to be helping out for this yeah. and and whatnot. But if you're in the team aspect, you have to get it's it's hurting cats. I mean, you guys know. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Getting streamers together. <laughs> hurting cats. <laughs> so, Google oh, we know. <laughs> Use those Google Docs. Uh, everything else. Um, you know, uh, and then, you know, I know later on we're going to talk about reaching out to game developers. And there's, you also need that time that if you want to have incentives to, you know, for game giveaways and that kind of stuff, you're going to mm -hmm. need that time to reach out to, to game developers to get those keys oh, or those, those giveaways and whatnot. Uh, Katie? Yeah. Uh, wait, what was the original question? <laughs> <laughs> uh, tips for, for planning your first event. So, um, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, in yeah, terms yeah. of ideas, goals, like how long it should be, et cetera. As far as incentives go, that is always a tough thing because especially if you do a lot of charity streams uh, to oh, kind bet. of feel like, feel like you're getting boring um i honestly uh, just this is what i do is i just look up what other people are doing and kind of get their ideas get their uh, opinions on it and then i go to my mod team because you know how much as streamers your mod team is the oh uh yeah. the core like you need them they're mm -hmm. the brain they take all my scrambled like panic what if i do this what if i do that what if i <laughs> do this and mix it with that and then they're like now katie do this and then do that and then they bring it together for me so <laughs> thanks mods in chat love you yeah, um yeah. so as far as incentives there's a lot of things you can do there's simple things um and honestly you don't need to do anything crazy and you do have to know your limit as far as how long you're going to stream i've tried to do 24 hour not gonna happen 12, 12 hours is my max and and yeah. even after 12 hours i'm like there's like two days of just <laughs> where am i yeah. yeah am i in a dream state so you really don't want to push yourself too much you don't want to hurt yourself trying to help others you mm. do need yeah. to take care of yourself so find your cutoff and then don't go further than that um for sure I guess, and then yeah. and then a big thing also just uh, to add on that, like I've done twelve, I've done twenty four. It definitely yeah. is about what you're, what you can. Oh yeah, oh god, yeah. I do at least two twenty four hour streams each year uh, for charity and whatnot. <laughs> but tip one, I make sure I do it with uh, fellow casters. So physically, mm. I'll have fellow casters next to me, so we can share that energy, bouncing off it's off each other. Idea. It takes it makes it less stressful mm -hmm. because That's you're not having to carry that last year actually the entire yeah. So yeah. um. That is that is a big thing. And then two, you want to make sure you have consistently uh, 
uh, breaks. So either every hour, every two hours, you're taking a 10, 15, 20 minute break. And what we typically do is I'll create a special, I'll create three videos for break times that are then shouting out the street, the, the, the charity that we're, we're taking care of. Um, what, so people are still getting the information of what we're raising money for while we are getting that time to take breaks. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so one brief uh, terminological distinction I wanted to add in there too is tips versus donations. Oh yes. Charity, mm -hmm. charity stuff. It's donations. Yeah. Personal stuff. It's tips, right? Because that's part of why you want to make that make that distinction mm -hmm. that somebody's not donating to your personal brand. There, it's a it's a tip. It's that it's got that proper designation. Donations yeah. are for charity stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, this was actually, uh, you know, streaming five years ago, everyone called it donations. Top, you had yeah, your top donator, which literally is not a word. There's no such yeah, thing as a top donor. donator. I mean, even I did that. Everybody. Oh, I did it too. Yeah. A hundred percent. But like, <laughs> yeah. you know, that was the language that everyone used. And, no. um, you know, it is really an important <laughs> distinction, especially for the people that are tipping you or you mm -hmm. for tax classifications. Like that yes. is an important distinction where, yeah, a lot of a lot of us do know the difference. Like, yeah, we'll call it a donation, but we know it's a tip. But a lot of people don't know that, and that will get you into trouble. Don't know that. Huh. Uh, yeah. um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I'm but, writing that timestamp down. Somebody clip that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that that's um, it's a very subtle thing, but it's very important. Yeah. And um, luckily, a lot of um streaming services have moved away from that language. Uh, mm -hmm. Streamlabs, unfortunately, still has the option to call it donations, which I don't know why it's an option. Like, you should just change the language over completely. Um, but yeah, I, I think Stream Elements has changed that, I think. Um, but yeah, the small thing. Frank Frank makes an interesting point saying that, that she pulls from game shows to try and adapt something that's designed for that and make it into a stream thing. Yeah. That's a cool idea, yeah um yeah. doing little mini games and stuff like getting getting chat involved um and making oh, yeah. gamifying things is people love that yeah, yeah. just Definitely. also this this popped up and i i think it warrants saying please don't do that thing where you're like yeah you know for every subscriber we get i'm gonna take half of that and put it towards charity yeah, don't that do gets that complicated don't be that person don't yeah. don't do that uh, I mean, even it's easy even to want to do right like it's, <sighs> it's it's easy to want to make that to make that kind of shift. You feel like you're helping, and and it 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 can be a it can be a, a kind of an obvious default that we that we want. But to it's do. it's it's ultimately helping you in a certain way. You know, it's kind of like as she as Katie was talking about that that making sure most of the money is going to charity, right? So mm -hmm. if if I warrant myself as the subscriber, you subscribe to me, and I'm going to take fifty percent, then that's fifty percent only that's going to a charity, and fifty percent is going to me. And that's yeah, that's, that's and that's wrong. your like personal decision. Like, I I don't ever tell everyone that I'm doing that and try to like uh, make sure everybody knows that I donate my personal funds to charities right. myself. Yep. Like yeah. it's a separate yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, I don't. I'm not like, hey, everybody, if you donate, <laughs> yeah. uh, this fifty percent is going. It's like on my side time. Hey, I'm gonna buy a bunch of, a bunch of dog toys and give them to the dogs because they're I'm, adorable. I'm super into that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I I, a, I don't necessarily one. think there's an issue with it so long as you have an option for people to donate if they want to donate. But I think like mm -hmm. there are, are streamers that I know that just like passively give 10% of their sub earnings to charity yeah. or like you know yeah. they just are like this yeah. month I'm foregoing my my sub money for charity. Um, obviously yeah. leveraging it as an incentive to sub isn't good but like if you exactly. have an option to directly donate and be like oh and also subs especially twitch prime subs those are free for them and then now Definitely. they're donating to charity so um i don't really think there's like a problem it just depends on on how you actually do it it can be yeah, it's better with multiple options put it the way you word it yeah mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. is is it how you market it of course exactly yeah. i'd agree with that so we actually mm -hmm. had a question from twitter uh from mr lit who asks uh hey. always wondered hey always wondered how to approach game companies about possible game keys without seeming like a leech or selfish. What are y'all's mm. thoughts on how best to approach this, especially for someone who does not visit cons or expos? Ooh, Go far, I was Ryan. about to say, like, <laughs> conventions is, is a big typical thing. Like, PAX, you go up to the indie level, and that's like a day for me is just going to all of those booths. Um, as a game developer my, myself, because uh, I had a deal done, one, 
um, DMing or typically going to the website of a game developer, they always have like a little press inquiry kind of email, uh, no, you know, or usually, <laughs> usually <laughs> yes, giant more often than not, if they've been smart, they've also left their DMs open on, on their Twitter account. Yeah. There's <laughs> many different things that you're hoping that the game developers have done on their side to make it easier to reach out to them. Uh, but mainly one, however you were able to reach them, make sure it's professional. Don't be like, hey, bro, sup, dude. Sup, can, I, can, I, can, can, I, can I smack on one of those keys, please? <laughs> or something like, I, I've gotten so many messages where grammar is just not a thing. And it's just like, why am I going to want to work with you if, if you clearly don't understand mm -hmm. how to form a sentence? Um, but one, it is just reaching out. Also, don't do this. Don't apologize. Don't be like, I'm sorry, I don't have sorry. more followers or I don't have enough I'm views. I'm just a small streamer. Oh, yeah. God, yes, that kind of don't stuff. downplay yourself. I, I heartedly agree with that. Exactly. And so uh, case in point, you know, when it came to a lot of our games at Telltale, we'd have people that would reach out. And as as long as I could see, like, they, they put in the message what their, their Twitch, you know, channel was. Here's my email. You have to make it so it is just completely idiot proof. I don't have to go searching yeah for mm -hmm. your information and you verifiable which is important too like yeah. if you're yes. claiming that you're this person have your matching email that you're sending that to on your twitter or on your twitch so they can verify that <laughs> that is you because there is a big problem with people imitating like so just mm -hmm. yeah. make sure you do that too yeah so as long as it's professional and you've you've made it idiot proof that kind of stuff then that way they can check out your channel. They're, they are gonna look at your clips and your vids to see what kind of personality are. If I find somebody who is just toxic and whatnot, I'm like, well, that doesn't match our brand. That doesn't match what I'm going for. Never mind. You could be a great streamer, mm -hmm. but if you swing towards a toxic, not more often than not, yeah, uh, game developers are gonna say nah, bro. So it, it really depends. It really depends. But all I say is you just, you gotta put your best foot forward and get used to and being okay with marketing yourself. You have to be mm -hmm. okay with marketing yourself in this whole heckin' industry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Entirely. I, I also would say make sure that when you're asking for a code, it's well in advance. Like you don't want to ask a code like the day before or the day of because you're not going to get a key. You're yes. not gonna get a response. Want. Like you yeah. need to be looking, uh, I would say like two months to a month ahead to start to reach out to before a game comes out, start to reach out to the devs. Um, yeah. Honestly, don't be afraid to even go f earlier than that just as like a, initial introduction be like i plan on yeah. playing this like you know i'd love Something to be added like. to your press list if you have one like you mm -hmm. know show showcase your content link to your content do you have any specific plans for what you want to do illustrate that you know oh, let yeah. them know like are you playing a big launch event are you like doing like a 24-hour stream are you doing like cool giveaways or something you know include anything unique that you might be doing as well because they they want to showcase your content like they want people making good content for their game no matter what size you are. Yeah. Definitely. That's no, 100 true. But then there's companies out there like Valorant or or Blizzard that you're just, you're not going to get a hold of them. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no matter what you do. <laughs> so just, just, just be okay with that. And then also, if they don't get back to you, uh, don't be bothering them. Don't be messaging them every day. I like to give it like a two week little thing like, okay, because that's yeah. also as, as Loco was saying, if you leave enough time, then you've left enough time for two weeks later to be like, hey, just get a little bum, just really interested in the game. And if the answer is no, by the way, be professional because those are the yes. people that are, are like, if I have to say no to somebody, but they're professional to me, then later down the road when I'm able to, mm -hmm. I may go, you know what? That person was awesome. Yeah. Let me reach out to them. And if so. you're rude, you may end up on seriously Clara's Twitter feed. <laughs> Watch out. Oh my it's God. I've seen zone. some of those. Those are bad. Those are bad. Oh, no. Remember that they're flesh and blood people. Treat yeah. them with dignity and respect. Absolutely. Simple. Yeah. Absolutely. Am I the only one that uses key mailer? No, mm -hmm. you're not. No. No. Okay. Because that's, that's what I tend to go towards. I mean, everything that you said. Um, I, I've done and is all amazing, but then it, when there's those games, it, you can check Keymailer and see if they're on there because sure. all of sure. the companies, the devs that really want you know their game to be played and are more open, I find on Keymailer, they put it up there and you're able to request really easy and just make an account on there. And I use Keymailer all the time and that's 
it really honestly it introduces me to new games too and then i'm able to meet other devs and then and, mm -hmm. and yeah work with them it definitely yeah. helps yeah. automate the process yeah, yeah. Right. uh um, terminals uh evolve terminals is another one too evolve yeah mm -hmm. uh, and now I'll just say Dusky, uh, yes, a larger streamer content creators. I got messages from larger streamer content creators that were not professional and oh, were frankly yeah. a little little shitty and uh, <laughs> shot them down and didn't care. Like, yeah. I, I don't care what the size of a channel is, large or small. If they're not professional, then I, mean, I, I simply don't want to work with you if that's how you behave and perform, mm -hmm. right? It's simple. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. your introduction. That's when you're meeting somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, Arsenal as well. Another good site, Arsenal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, and yeah, I, I think like also another thing you need to um, remember is like a, a lot of these. Um, what was I gonna say? Dang it, my train of thought is going away. I'm so sorry. Uh, oh, to do with the a lot of the devs that we like we've had on our show and that we asked this question to about like tips for doing this. Like a lot of these, they will tell you like you know numbers don't matter and it's it's easy to look at like the directories and look at people who get early mm -hmm. access to things and be like oh it's only big streamers get codes for things but that's really not the case and i think a great starting point is working with indie devs because they are very likely to respond to your email work with you and um you know it's, it's a great starting point uh to kind of practice initiating these types of relationships very receptive mm -hmm. often and there's yeah, also something absolutely. off the base off this that I feel like uh, because we did want to talk about also potential marketing tips that could go off. And this could be connected to this also in a big way uh, where I love focusing on a lot of different kind of things when it comes to going live is good mark, you know, good tweets putting out I'm going live. Biggest thing I can say is, and this is a harsh one to, to, to pay potentially here, stop using Google search images to find a GIF and put that in your go live tweet. Were you talking about that today on stream? What was that? Me? Google yeah. Images? Uh, no. Well, I heard you talk no, no I, it's something I preach all the time because people ask me that kind of questions and yeah. uh, it does nothing to further your brand. It does not make the company feel like you care. If I just go and search for a GIF and just toss it onto a tweet, then a company is most likely not going to retweet that. They're not going to check you out. And those are the kind of things also, do you realize your Twitter, if you're asking a company for support and keys, they're going to look at your timeline are you somebody who causes trauma? Are you somebody that, uh, you know, is is toxic even on there? Are you professional? And if the answer is no, then they can also pass you on for those reasons as well. So just be aware. Anything you put on social media, just expect every single person's eyeballs are going to see that and, and judge you based off of that. Word. Yeah. Oh, really? Having like an awareness for your your reach and and what your brand means is super important and just being professional like you don't have to run a channel that's super professional but like you have to be aware that there's consequences to what you say on twitter or mm -hmm. your vods and yeah you can you can be like a super negative ragey kind of streamer if that's your stick fine but like realize like people will scrutinize you for that and decide whether or not to give you a code for something and they have every right to do that so uh, just keep yeah. in mind that the type of content that you create, um, you know, does affect your opportunities. And I have had a, a surprising number of contracts that have denoted exactly that. Um, of course, you have like the limiting, you know, defamatory language and whatever, but mm -hmm. also um, trying to specify the, you know, vulgarity and the types of language that you use and uh, you're limiting some qualities of your emotional reaction to things. Um, one thing I will say, you know, if you guys want to start kind of working at home now, I know I have an iPhone. I don't know if this translates to Android and I was showing Hunter this a uh, while back when we were together in Portland. Uh, there's some apps that I'll use to help be able to go live, create my own gifts or little yeah. videos and whatnot. And thankfully, since Twitter has now gone the way of Instagram, you can make a video 30 seconds long and it'll be on repeat instead of stopping. Um, but uh, Wordle and Video Leap are two apps I would highly recommend. Uh, when to, I got him to check out. Uh, Wurble's great if a company hasn't put out any gifts of their own that you can work off of and use. Um, that way you, you can take a still that? image. Uh, W-E-R-B-L-E, -E, Wurble. It's really weird. And Video Leap? Uh, and then a Video Leap <laughs> yes. is one word, Video Leap, uh, is a really good one. And the cool thing about Video Leap is that Video Leap respects gifts. So you can actually bring a GIF in there like a video file and it'll play through so you can add that to your 
going live tweets. And also then, this is also where to remember, Twitter is great for the one-to-one ratio. If you want to get the full thing on a timeline, using a 16 by nine cinematic, while may look good in certain ways, if you want the full fledged, being able to see everything, one-to-one ratio is a good format and Video Leap will allow you to put that in there. Interesting. Huh. I need to write these things down. I didn't even know. Yeah, I already <laughs> did. <laughs> Serious, hey. Putting out a video uh, <laughs> actually more on specific on these kind of things right, uh, here cool. soon to kind of help out with this kind of stuff and get people more into the know of how to properly market and what the difference is between Twitter and Instagram. Yeah, I lucked awesome. out with an in-person workshop with Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so next question we have from Jesse Pyro: pre/slash post stream routines. What do you do before mm-hmm. and after a stream? Besides Eat. sleeping, I guess sleeping and eating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I eat during stream too. I know. I know it doesn't look good, but I can't stop eating. It's just, you know, um, I, I definitely make sure I'm hydrated beforehand because you don't realize like literally this whole time I haven't drink, drank a sip of water and I have a water right here. You don't realize how much you're not drinking. So if you're already dehydrated before the stream, you're going to be screwed later on. So you definitely, definitely want to be hydrated beforehand. As far as naps, I, I tend to stream earlier in the day specifically because that's when I have the most energy. So I like mm. to do a post nap mm. or pass out on the floor. This rug is very comfy behind me. <laughs> like fall um, on the chair. <laughs> yeah, it's like flail. But definitely want to be hydrated. That's that's the most important thing that I, that I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you also made like a really good point actually that I want to call out is um streaming when you have the most energy and when you're trying to figure out your Mm -hmm. schedule not everyone has that flexibility but if you are trying to figure out your schedule especially if you have more time now uh instead of worrying so much about like oh what's the best time slot well there's not really the best time slot the best time slot is what's best for you uh and what works with your energy levels for me i'm the same way i'm a morning person that's when i'm the Mm -hmm. most productive that's when my energy is peak like, you know, I go to bed early. Mm-hmm. I'm grandma style. So I try to stream early <laughs> there you go. and That's be easy. tired the rest of the day. <laughs> grandma style. Yeah. Uh. The, uh, a tip that goes on to that in addition is like knowing what it takes for you to get to sleep, which I'm a massive advocate for now. Um, well, I streamed for the majority of my career late night. And mm-hmm. I can't end a stream and go to sleep. No. I end a stream and have like three to five hours of wind down because I'm high energy for the stream. I'm, mm-hmm. you know, coffee fueled and it's just like ramped up to 11. And I can't just, I can't just stop and go to sleep. Some people can. And if that's yeah. you, late night might work fantastically. I had to recently shift over to morning streams so that I could have that wind down in a normal afternoon instead mm-hmm. of at 2 p.m., 2 a.m. Yeah, for me, it was, uh, I was doing, since I was streaming on the side when I was at Telltale, like, I had my day job and then come home and it's like, then all I have is that nighttime. Mm-hmm. Um, but then when everything happened, it was like, I, I after being for two and a half years on, at nighttime, I had to switch to daytime because I was like, well, I still want to hang out with my wife once in a while, so I need to take those work hours. And so it was, it was, a, it was a big shift, as I'm sure Hunter can can attest switching yeah. from one extreme time to another, but it is mm-hmm. literally what works best for you because it's daytime somewhere in the world and people will tune in, you know, yeah. if, if they're interested in your content. So yeah, 100%, there's not like a right time to be live. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah. that's actually a good follow-up question, Ryan, since you had to balance a full-time job and streaming, that's, yeah. that's, that resonates with a lot of people that are watching, I'm assuming. Um, what are some tips you have with, you know, maintaining energy and figuring out your schedule? Oh. <laughs> I well, it, it really depends. Are you with somebody? Are you alone? Uh, you know, there's a lot of things that can factor into that. Yeah. Um, you know, because you want to make sure you're present. You know, it's very easy, I think, for people to sometimes become a workaholic and then and the, everything that you're having going on takes precedence, and you can end up, you know, leaving your loved ones feeling neglected and you never yeah, want that 100 percent true including um, yourself neglected <laughs> exactly you, and and i think that's the biggest thing is work-life balance is so so very important it is mm-hmm. if you're going to bring the energy the excitement if your channel is going to be worth watching you got to make sure you're present and the only way you do that is by also having some you time getting out being with loved ones 
So work-life balance is so very, very, very important. And so uh, for me, as a game developer, man, I'm working eight, 12, shit. I've worked 36-hour shifts at times, you know, uh, for for the job. Yeah, people can tell some stories. Um, but uh, <laughs> people don't understand. Game developers, by the way, mostly salary. Don't get paid overtime. Yep. So be, be nice in the comments. Let's when talk it comes about to game crunch devs. in the gaming industry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> sorry. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's the, that would be the entire this is where, like, of the show. If you could have, you know, flashbacks going right now, this, is, this would be the, the World War II. Uh, I literally, I remember on Walking Dead Season 1, Episode 5, I would work 16 hours. I would put my feet up on my chair, head underneath my desk, get two hours of sleep, wait back up, and work another 16 hours. Finally go home, sleep four hours, come back. And none of this is paid overtime. This is normal for... for for game developers. This is one of the reasons why I'll even openly say it. I don't support Fortnite because uh, their game developer is one of the worst <laughs> offenders when it comes to overworking crunch. game developers when it comes to crunch. I did not know that. Mm. Oh, oh, it's a big thing. I actually had a few friends that left Telltale after everything happened, went over there, and they're being asked to work seven days a week. And one of my friends said, like, I'd like to not come in over the weekend. I'd like to see my wife and daughter. And the following week, he got fired. Wow. So pre and post show um, <laughs> uh, habits and <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> so sorry Terrible. I just it's it's it, yeah if you want to get into there's a lot that goes on that a lot of people don't realize when it comes to crunch time uh, and and game developers so more often than not if there is an extended time on a favorite game you're looking forward to coming out yeah yeah be understanding because those people are working exceedingly hard under very hard let's put it this way and then we can move on <laughs> it is easier for me to be a content creator in many different ways than a game developer for and me, that should speak something <laughs> yeah that should say something yeah oh the well, streaming's easy you just play video games <laughs> <laughs> oh god then that's i'm sorry totally i'm the worst <laughs> troll today <laughs> Oh, what are you doing, Wes? I'm done with today. I'm sorry. I just don't even care. <laughs> so what do you do in the, when you're when you're lining up for a show, though, like do, like so the 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 possible options, right? Like you're setting your title. How far in advance are you taking to to make sure that you've got it? They've crafted a title. That you've crafted a tweet. Do you tell people thirty minutes, an hour in advance in a you know tweet or on Discord? Um, you know, like what's that? What's that kind of setup look like? I guess it kind of uh, depends on how the day's going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's basically it. I could have a half hour to, you know, kind of set things up, or I could panic. I'm at the grocery store and I totally forgot what time it was, and I'm like, Dude. "I'll be home in a minute." And uh, <laughs> there we go. Uh, Just kind of depends. I, <laughs> I uh, my tweets this, uh, since I create all my own gifts and videos and whatnot. I have thirty minutes the night before. I know exactly what we're gonna play the day. I'm live consistently Monday through Friday from nine a.m. to four p.m. So I know exactly the times. The only Ryan with two ends. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, seriously, I mean, I have all my lights pre-programmed depending on the game that I we were gonna play. Mm. What's going on? I need uh, to do that. Yeah. You know, um, I even have, and this is an also important for every content creator out there after your stream, sometime after your stream, doesn't have to be right after it works for me to be right after have 30 minutes scheduled out to look at your email. The worst thing when it comes mm. to game developers trying to work with you is the frustration that they feel when you're not checking your messages. Oh and, mm -hmm. and, uh, I would all the time get like, well, when is this happening? I sent you an email last week. You clearly have not spent the time. So why should I care mm -hmm. helping you if That's you're not true. taking the 30 minutes your commitment? to check your messages? So I have, at, right after that, I then have a 4 to 3.30, uh, a, a 4 o'clock to 4.30 that I am sitting in my chair and checking all my emails and all my DMs all right. and making sure that I've written everything back so I'm staying on top of all that. I mean, mm -hmm. since this is a job, right? You got to treat it like a job. Mm -hmm. So you yeah, the, the 30 minutes before, I definitely got to check the email. I didn't mention mm -hmm. that, like, when you do the title and you do the Twitter <laughs> post, 
but you always have to check all of your med- uh, your notifications and everything because you never know what you're missing. Mm-hmm. And then somebody might come into your chat and be like, um, did you check your notifications? <laughs> and you don't want to be like, I saw it, but I didn't look at it. <laughs> you don't want to say that. You want to make sure that you're up to date on everything. Yeah. In terms of like you mentioned the going live tweet and you mentioned what else did you mention? You said title, change title, title. Uh-huh. that the title I do like a minute before the stream starts. And then the tweet I don't do until like mm. after the stream starts, because I don't even do it for an hour into the stream because I I want to wait till I'm actually live to do a going live tweet. Like, I guess it shouldn't be going live. It should be I'm live tweet uh because mm. like people don't want to just come into a tweet or click on this tweet and then what they see the intro mm-hmm. or you didn't hit start streaming yet so uh oh, i think yeah. it's a little bit better to wait until you're actually producing the content so that when people do click it you're likely to find you live versus like waiting for you to go live yeah i just have it ready and it says that i'm live and then the second that i go live then i click the tweet mm-hmm. That's what I so do. that it's That's- so they don't just go to my page and be like wait is she supposed to be on <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's that's what I do. I have it saved under drafts, so I can just click on drafts yeah. mm, and that's smart. It makes it, it makes it easy. Yeah, yeah all yeah. organized. And my my community is even I my community made into a game. Who can be the first retweeter? Because I typically <laughs> ten minutes into the into the stream, I like to thank everybody who already hit it without mm-hmm. me saying a single damn thing. So I will yeah. actually of the people who who retweeted it to try to help out the stream. Mm-hmm. That's cool. That's a good <laughs> idea. Yeah. Because they, they really help you out. So you yeah. always got to make sure to thank them for, for retweeting or even just liking it. Just any sort of interaction really, for really sure. helps yeah. you out. Yeah. They're taking that extra time. Yeah. Uh, and I, I've actually explained this a few times where, you know, people are like, oh, I don't have any followers. So I don't, my retweet doesn't matter. But it actually does because of the way the algorithm works and just yeah, having any type of interaction, a comment, mm-hmm. a like, a retweet. Any type of interaction makes a tweet Absolutely. seem more important and more likely to show up on other people's feeds. Uh, so it is a, a way to get discovered by other people. There's also the social aspect of the social psychology aspect of seeing more interaction with a tweet makes it seem more valuable to others who see it. So sure. if I have a going live tweet that has eight likes on it, people might see that and go like, oh, I guess nothing special is happening today. If it's got a hundred likes on it, you're like, the what? same person might be like, oh, it's happening. It's hopping. It's I got to go. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to miss this. <laughs> it's popping. <But> we'll say <laughs> uh, more hashtags and blah, blah, blah does not equal mm. more exposure. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> if, if, I, if I ever see a tweet that has more blue text than white text, that is just the complete... <laughs> scroll by so uh, treat uh, hashtags or tags like a sniper rifle not like a shotgun blast mm. hey i like that yeah that's so yeah. It's, very it's interesting more metaphor, yeah i yeah, used to, i i made that mistake starting out you make all the mistakes yeah. of uh-huh. course so and it's totally fine to make the mistakes but i used the hashtag the retweet sites oh yeah and right, just, right no it just did not help me at all well, that's why we're here, right? Is to share yeah, our exactly. failures I was gonna so say people it. don't have to make the same mistake. Learn exactly. from us. You know, Learn that's actually a good police. question. What is like a mistake that you used to make that now you can pass on to someone else and be like, okay, actually don't do this. That the the support small streamers and the, mm. the bazillion mm-hmm. hashtags and whatnot. I at the beginning was like, oh, if I do it this way, more people, it's more searchable and <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> no yeah that was that was my major mistake is is thinking that those do something yeah mm-hmm. yeah it's, uh, it's different however i will say on, on instagram however uh instagram is a platform made for for hashtags so while you're yeah. going to be want to be very few maybe two possibly three depending on what's going on with uh the, the hashtag so i typically do twitch as a hashtag so it's searchable mm-hmm. under twitch and then two whatever game i'm playing what is what is the mm-hmm. focus what are we where are we playing so those are the two hashtags but on instagram uh you know we'll put a bottom line under there and then a bunch of hashtags to help increase the surf- searchability on that so instagram and twitter two different beasts very different yeah it comes that kind of stuff mm-hmm. yeah yeah, I really just, if I use a hashtag on Twitter, um, 
use them and I'll I'll actually just put like if I'm playing Minecraft I'll put hashtag Minecraft but I put it into the sentence like I'm playing Minecraft today yeah. and that will be the hashtag instead of just having like a bunch of hashtags at the bottom or anything oh. you can just put one or two in there and then on Instagram I limit to about 10 max hashtags um there's a lot of them that don't even do much you really want the ones that um are specifically to you like a twitch you're a twitch streamer um i do a lot of hiking posts i go outside so i'll always do like hiking or or um you know national forest some stuff like that so people can see actually what's happening where i'm at um and, and things like that definitely that's really cool um what platforms do you use for notifications versus discoverability uh well i mean twitter and instagram are my big ones any any other ones that you guys use? What platforms what? Uh, what other kind of social media platforms do you use for discoverability? Um, I think uh, Twitter. Twitter has decent crossover to other platforms. Like, I think Instagram is, like, one of the hardest to actually get people onto somewhere else. Um, mm -hmm. YouTube, because you can make crossover content with YouTube to Twitch. Um, in terms of making like highlight reels and stuff so that can be a way too um the while you know streaming youtube there's definitely a lot of differences but you can figure out the differences and then utilize your streaming content and repurpose it for your youtube comment uh content mm -hmm. that can be super powerful super super helpful mm -hmm. i just recently started doing the reels with youtube um i had i used to use youtube a lot and i was trying to get into that and help like help make that one of my main social medias and it just didn't end up working out with me because uh that's another mistake i made is the content that i was making on youtube wasn't similar to enough to what i was actually doing like on twitch mm -hmm. um, you have to have them have some sort of similarities otherwise people will go and like content. yeah people will like one and then they'll go over to the other one and be really confused they're like wait i thought this is di different stuff going on but I just recently started doing like the highlight reels and stuff with YouTube, uh, putting the Twitch stuff and um, just kind of overlap it um, well, to kind of help out. But Instagram and Twitter are the main ones that I use. Main ones, yeah. And then uh, I, I about six months ago, started growing a very small and humble YouTube channel. YouTube is actually a really powerful tool, <laughs> believe it or not, for Twitch because YouTube still has a better search algorithm when it comes mm. to finding content. I mean, heck, it's connected to Google for goodness sake. So a lot of their stuff yeah. also is connected to Google. Mm -hmm. So if you want people to potentially also uh, find you if you're mainly on Twitch and that kind of stuff, um, there's a whole lot of marketing stuff that we could download if we wanted to turn this into a marketing thing. But needless to say, I will say this, the very uh, first three words in the title of your YouTube video is actually the most searched for in the Google algorithm. So not the tags, not the description body of text. The hmm. first three words in your title is the one that will dictate a lot of the algorithm and how searchability your, your video is. Hmm. For a, a mistake that popped into my head, one that I made uh, earlier on that Rotato pointed out to me is that it's one I struggled with even two weeks ago. I, I messed this one up too is reading out comments out loud before I uh. screamed it. Oh, no. Yeah. He, he was yeah. like, you read out everything and you really need to not. And I, was like, I, I guess I do do that. So now I try and like get a quick scan to see like, oh, is this like fundamentally misogynistic in the second half of the phrase? A sentence, I'm like, okay, let's just not go ahead and ban that one and not read it out loud. <laughs> yeah that was a big lesson learned to me <laughs> yeah that uh that like i'm pretty good at pre-screening but um sometimes yeah it sometimes it does but yeah i don't know if viewers even realize that that most of us read your message before we read your message because like a we want to make sure it's okay to read out loud b we queue up a response and i think that's where like this whole streamer like add kind of thing comes in because like yeah. You so will much. be, you, you read chat and you're queuing up responses to this person exactly. and this person and this person. And then you read and you're going, it's like this weird, like you've got a lot going on when you're reading chat. And, you know, one interesting thing that I also want to point out is um, I feel like reading every single message out loud in chat creates like a very 
like it kind of breaks the flow of a stream um especially as like a channel grows and we kind of have we actually have someone who's asked about this about the balance of engaging the audience versus like you know selecting certain messages to read and i think that's really important to realize like as a channel grows like you don't want to sit there and read every single comment out loud because it's not interesting for chat like and if you don't have anything to say to it then it just it just becomes like it, i don't know it's like a weird like energy i guess like i don't know if you guys like filler yeah it's like when someone just sits there and reads every comment and then but doesn't add any input to it you know yeah, and you true. can't get yeah. into the stream and and the game that you're playing and yeah um it kind of takes takes away especially because a lot of the chat may not have anything to do with what you're doing yeah yeah, that's a good point, especially when you are playing a game or doing something else. Like if you're just stopping right. to read everything, then there's like there's no ebb and flow where you play the game, catch a comment, respond, play the game, catch a comment. You're just like stopping and reading everything and then not even yeah. looking at the game. I, I, I will like say because you guys are making me you guys are making me smile on this because uh, as we briefly were talking about before we went live, me being an extrovert, extrovert wow. kind of person. I have to admit, I've gotten a little bit more needy when it oh. comes to the comments because oh, sure. I'm just like, I need that human interaction. <laughs> and so there are times I'll call out my chat. And I'm like, chat, wake, wake up, talk to me, please say more. Like because I'm just, uh, it, it is a weird time to live in right now. And uh, so it's kind of funny is that I, I almost sometimes like we'll have those as all you guys know, you'll be really busy at times, you know, a lot of chat and then you know, lurkers will happen, people going to lunch or something like that. And it's just, mm -hmm. I don't know, for me, I, I end up, I think I could sometimes become that, that repeater a little bit because I'm just like, Oh God, I'm just, I need that interaction, that human, human touch. Yeah. <laughs> it's understandable. Yeah. Are you okay? Do you need a hug? Never uh, mind. I can't uh, hug you. <laughs> Internet <laughs> hug. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, is, it is one of those kind of things is like, yeah, I think that, that, so for me, <laughs> more than ever, that Twitch and uh, that that interaction with chat is so much more needed in these times. Mm -hmm. Because uh, so yeah, I, I will say I, I I sometimes I think even now still fall into that problem of sometimes I'll just say something just to just to say something and <laughs> I don't add anything to it. <laughs> I mean that's also a a good idea to do when chat slows down. You kind of want to liven chat up. Is like just ask like a basic question or be like like yo pineapple and pizza or no you yeah. know what i mean like get chat anime. riled up you know anime, <laughs> anime. Every time. I, 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 if as hilarious as it is it is absolutely what i use to spike chat <laughs> what if asking them what anime they watch anime, you, you there's a number of questions you can throw out there for anime but it's like what's your favorite anime uh dubbed subbed What's, and then it's like contentious, uh, you know, conversation for like 30 minutes. <laughs> and you can facilitate like a productive component to mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. um, and getting, even getting recommendations. Like I actually have found most of my favorite anime from chat when I asked this question simply to get chat rolling. Oh, I have like a I list do. now that I have to watch. <laughs> my mods put together. I need some suggestions. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm just saying. Chat has got you. <laughs> chat has got you. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> I've only ever watched one. Which one? So, <laughs> I, and it's been a long time. So I actually, so that's a good. That's a question I might need to ask. Yeah, My Hero Academia. If you haven't watched My Hero Academia, I I I'm working on it. Right I'm on season two oh. right now. So good. Mm -hmm. I watched Inuyasha. That's what I watched. See, look, this even works for us. <laughs> Dang it! <laughs> Got <I'm> sidetracked. <laughs> 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 um oh, okay so we have a question let's see we've got a question from serotonin girl who asks what do you think it takes to be a streamer slash what equipment do you recommend for those new to the job oh boy um so we'll, let's start with it, the first one like what does it take yeah oh god that's such a broad one really, hunter you, you it go. really is <laughs> you go you go hunter yeah hunter come on yeah. okay. it takes to have a beautiful sexy hat like that one right there this yeah. Is, this yeah. is my Monday hat for sure. <laughs> yeah. I, I, in, in terms of personalities, there's so, so many wildly different vibes and different styles of places and social uh, and community constructs that 
I, I have never really subscribed to the idea that you mm -hmm. have to be intrinsically entertaining in a traditional or standard way to make it as a streamer. Because uh, I know a number of people who have uh, incredible streams and great communities of people I love watching, lurking in, whatever, who have a completely different mode, a completely different vibe. My recommendation has nothing to do with intrinsic skill or talent or qualities or personality and much more with your self-awareness, your willingness to adapt, and, uh, of course, kind of crafting a vision for... <laughs> there it is, <laughs> folks. We, we heard it this episode. <laughs> for, your, for your stream. Like, who? what do you actually want to get out of it? Like, if you can define that in advance, mm -hmm. what it is that your stream is going to be, what needs does it serve? That's something that you can check back in on if you get a lot of popularity or a lot of really good stuff going or none of that. Mm -hmm. It's something yeah. that you can check back in on and go, am I on track for what I want it to be? And that's when you can feel really good and motivated toward your own content. And I think that's critical. I mean, yeah, you definitely want to be you. You don't want to be a, a, a something like basically let's put it this way. It can be very tiring if you end up trying to project something that isn't natural with yourself uh, sure. because awesome. you can just easily get burnout out anyway, just being you, but you try to add you being hyper and uh, hyperactive when you're really not mm -hmm. that kind of person uh, or even certain ways, vice versa, just, yeah. just be you because your community will grow and reflect who you are as a caster. So mm -hmm. uh, you want to make sure as, as Hunter was saying, is that, you know, you're in, you're in it for the long run. So you want to, you want to be you, you want to make sure you're, you're, you're getting something out of it as well. Or if there's a variation to it, like I'm significantly more, like active and, and excited and excitable on stream. Mm -hmm. um, but it's that's a role that I can perform. It's one that yeah. I knew that I could do. And it's so it's different from my in-person interaction and, and who I normally am, but mm -hmm. it's also not uh it's not like brutal. It's not yeah. like exhausting for me for me to do. It feels good to sort of play yeah. that role, you know? Yeah. And I think that so that's only a minor variation that I'd make. Yeah. I would say um oh, oh. Loco. I mean <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would just say, like, uh, the question was, uh, what do you think it takes to be a streamer? I think yeah. that one thing that every streamer needs to have is discipline. I feel like no matter what, you have to be disciplined sure. because you are yeah. your own boss. There mm -hmm. is work, like, even the people who seem like they're just playing games and it's as easy as possible, there's <laughs> a lot of work that goes into it to being a successful streamer. And when you are your own motivator, that can be challenging when you have to do the things you don't want to do and you have to wear all the hats, you know, that can be um, really hard for a lot of people. So discipline, very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was going to say discipline, but then I was also going to say um, patience. I feel like that's what I've used. I I've had to have a lot of patience, whether it's the game that I'm playing or what I'm doing or chat. Because if you're like, you know, quick to trigger a reaction, um, you may not do as well. Um, you, you need to be patient and realize that Twitch is, you know, a mixing pot of all different personalities and all different games and things that we're doing. And one person might take longer to learn a game than another. And you, you always just want to be very patient um, and realize that not everyone is the same. Um, and then the discipline, because I, I need a lot of that. Let's be honest, as far as getting my <laughs> dream set up and, you know, stick into the times and everything, you're, you're your own boss. It's so you need to be able to do that and not just, you know, sit on the, you're sitting on the couch and be like, well, I know I'm supposed to start at noon and I've been starting at noon for a year, but I'm just not going to get up and then just not tweet about it. You know, you can easily do that. Oh, yeah. But... Mm -hmm. Don't. <laughs> it's well. It's like it's like one of those kind of things that when people are looking forward to a game release or they count on a show, you mm -hmm. know, on on Hulu or whatever, like you know, coming out at a certain time, day after day after day, you got to treat it like that. You are that show. You are that content that they're looking forward to. And so, you know, more often than not, we get asked the question, you know, how do you grow on Twitch? And the biggest one I always say is you got to have a schedule, and you got to create a schedule it's you a can schedule. stick to. 
Um, there are times that you're going to get sick. There are times that you're going to have a hard day and it's totally understandable. If you yeah. make sure to message everyone in ahead of time, be like, Hey guys, I'm sorry. Just today is just not our day, especially with COVID-19 and, and everything happening. But, uh, for the most part, it, it's a job. So you gotta, you gotta treat it as such. As, really got to stick to the schedule. If you, yep. I've tried the just kind of streaming when I want to stream. And that is absolutely, if, if growing is what you'd like to do, that is not a way to go about it because mm -hmm. it, people want to know when you're going to stream and what time so they can be ready for it. They can put it on their calendars. They can be ready for your tweets. Um, yeah. Those people that see your live tweets are genuinely on at the same times. I don't know about you guys, but I go on Twitter around the same times every day. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it, you really got to stick to that schedule as much as you can. Obviously, like if you get sick or that you're just having a bad day or if you're getting a little burnout, totally understandable. But let everybody know, um, you know, otherwise it could be hurtful. Yeah. yeah. I mean, imagine your favorite TV show just being on whenever. <laughs> like they just throw a new episode, <laughs> like, uh, you know, random times, random days. I mean, having... That would uh, be weird. Yeah. Right. Like... <laughs> Having a, a time that people can expect you at, you know, is super helpful. Yeah. It doesn't have to be every day, but, you know, try to stick to the same time or like a similar schedule because um, it just mm -hmm. makes it easy. You want to make it easy for people to find you and remember you. Like, so for me, it's exactly. like, you can find me, you know, here at 11 a.m. Eastern. And, you know, if I'm not live within the hour, I'm probably not streaming that day. So just mm -hmm. be here at this time and, and see if I'm live. Um, yeah, and post it. Post when your schedule is. Like, I've got mine pinned at the mm -hmm. top of my Twitter, just so if anybody is like, wait, and actually my husband does this. He forgets my schedule literally every <laughs> single time. He never remembers it. And he's like, honey, don't be mad. But when are you streaming again? And I'm like, just go to my Twitter. I can't. <laughs> check my Twitter, yo. <laughs> just check my Twitter. It's the pin tweet. There you go. <laughs> There's a panel underneath the, uh, underneath the stream. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Panel underneath the stream. Oh, um, good idea. So to the second part of that question, what equipment do you recommend for those new to the job? What's what's the most important equipment to focus on? This right here. The, this right here? The lights? Yep. The lighting? Yep. The, lighting. the sunglasses? Uh, uh, <laughs> that's the I don't no. understand. What are you... Uh, How dark uh, is it in there? <laughs> having, having a light, because if you have a good light, like Elgato, I have the Elgato like flat uh, 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 screen kind of light that they have. Yeah, light, yeah, dude, this is yeah, I've got the key light. Sense. This is it is ridiculously bright. I don't know who needs it. Uh, uh, Breaking it up anything. to the max is like seeing God. You should, yeah, you, you got yeah I've got him lower. <laughs> yeah, you want to see God here? Here, let me let me let me show you. Let me you show you what look, looking into the face of God is. This is five. Hold on, I, I can do that too. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh my God, both of you! Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, these things are ridiculously strong. Um they're amazing and, and Where I am can, I? I, it's, everything's controlled oh, gosh. in gosh. We're not phone. liable for any yeah, injuries yeah, sustained during the show. Just, yeah, you guys you. you signed the contract. Where's my yeah. You know. Uh, but the cool thing is, is that I realized is I was cranking up the exposure and whatnot on my on my uh camera because I didn't really have a good proper light and once i finally got this thing um like my exposure on my my camera I, I don't have it on auto i don't yeah i don't have to crank it up so it's not doesn't have a grainy look to it and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. having having a good simple light will will help one wonders mm -hmm. yeah you can get studio lights for pretty cheap too if you're starting yeah. on a budget you know just get yeah. some of those big flat studio light even like a ring light like a simple ring light yeah. can just provide especially if you don't yeah. have a green screen just enough lighting to you know show in your face um the pro tip with the light too is like neutral color temperature which is 5500 to 6500 uh because they have like a numerical rating and that's where mm -hmm. it's in that natural light range where the camera picks it up well you aren't going to look purple unless you are purple you're not going to look purple um or like just super funky and wonky it makes it easy it's just like turn it on and it's good wow yeah lights yeah. who would have thought I started out, I just went to Home Depot or Menards or something and picked up like one of those work lights. Yeah. And I, I kind of just moved the pieces of it to like, you know, one facing the floor, one facing up the, just to kind of plants? make the lighting in the, <laughs> and it made it work, although it got really hot. They are yeah, those lights over are, by... 
Yeah, yeah, those lights are really warm. Like four hours in, I'm like, oh man, all right. <laughs> but it works. It's definitely important. I mean, I started streaming from Xbox. I I streamed from the Xbox. Wow. I had my Xbox <laughs> set on. I started as a Halo streamer. Love Halo. That's awesome. My goodness. That's awesome. And I literally used shoe boxes to put the connect on top of. And it <laughs> It worked. You don't have to have a crazy amount of beginning. And I feel like that is a mistake. If you are a new streamer, do not just go out and buy all this expensive stuff no, no, no. right away. Yeah, Work yeah. your way up to that. Because if you, I never had any of this stuff in the beginning, like I said, shoe boxes and a connect onto mm -hmm. the Xbox, <laughs> but I made it work. It wasn't terrible, yeah. but once I was able to slowly, um, get better equipment that worked. And I can reduce yeah, so. half of my setup because um, I have I have two big box lights with four lights in them each on either side and then a ring light over here. I can reduce half of my setup without a camera, and a lot of people stream without a camera. Drop the camera, yeah. uh, you can That's you true. can definitely make a, a quality. So I, in my opinion, top top pick is um, <clears throat> pardon me, top pick is audio. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, which doesn't mean expensive. You can no. uh, you in fact we on streamersquare.com we have guides for. Um, virtual audio software and free free ones as well you have some um, good free options honestly to fine tune yeah, your yeah, audio options. like you can even use a basic um you know like a blue yeti or something that's yeah. like you know very a very option. solid i think it's a very solid intro um mic for streamers even i know a lot of huge streamers that use like a blue yeti around that price range um that's razor siren another one yeah and it's like um you can really get good quality audio which is a couple tweaks you know like Getting yeah. a noise gate and compression, you can do that all virtually. Like, is it the best solution? No, but it's 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 really good. Like, it's solid enough, honestly. Yeah, yeah. It's a good good starting point and having. Uh, also, uh, if you do have a little blue yeti, something to uh, a little um, what is it called again? Little pop, pop uh, filter, filter, pop filter. Pop yeah, pop filter. Yeah. Having something on there that can uh, make it so your <laughs> bees and peas and all yeah. that kind of stuff isn't blowing yeah. people's eardrums. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, when I switched to computer from streaming from the couch, I actually didn't have a webcam for a while because that would be Connect, um, yeah. the Connect. So I didn't. So I actually upgraded my audio first mm -hmm. and got myself a chair because I was on the couch mm -hmm. before. And then I did no webcam for a little bit, and the quality of my stream was good. Was so much better that no webcam. I actually still did better. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, wow. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, uh, the um, <laughs> interesting. I didn't want to. Interesting can... factor to consider on this is that as amazing as your stream may look, tons of people lurk, and if you sound like garbage, mm -hmm. you're immediately a huge turnoff to yeah, all. everybody. This. Everybody True. who watches the stream is going to lurk at one point or another. They're playing another game. They're doing other stuff, and if all they have from you is bad audio. Yeah, it's unbearable. Like bad picture, you like I I'll listen to audio only on my phone or like the resolution on my phone's not gonna show you in 1080p anyways. And mm -hmm. a lot of people watch on mobile, so you know, or lower quality settings. So yeah, I do agree. Like audio is super important. Like I I'd put that above anything to focus on really, because like you can get a yeah. C920 for 50 bucks. It works. It does the job. It's the webcam. Uh it does the job for most people uh lighting you can unless you're doing a green screen like green screens you have to really worry about lighting but you know you yeah. can get away with a ring light or something audio is you gotta spend time on that i think you can't can't yeah. have ass audio and, and have it be satisfactory yeah that yeah, background sure. noise you got want to make sure to try to get rid of that because when i tune in somewhere and there's a bunch of background noise mm -hmm. like a i just it's like a jackhammer difficult. going off all day. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like a really loud fan or something. And you're like, what are they saying? It's like cutting it. Yeah. <laughs> As your, <laughs> your mic just literally just cut out. <laughs> Did it really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> literally in the moment. That was really well knew planned. What I was talking about. Really well that was planned. Awesome. That was expert Amazing. delivery. Really. You're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> I got you. Um, <laughs> no, I think Discord has actually had an issue with that for a while because we've had that on yeah. a couple episodes where yeah. people's mm -hmm. mics just cut out. I think it's Discord being being Discord. Um, but yeah, yeah. It's, 
Uh, we're Dan's almost pretty time. overloaded right now. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Yeah. Um, we're almost out of time, yeah. but I do want to get to one last question from Squatterifico, yeah. who asks, what are the traits slash skills you look for in a mod, if any, and how do you foster slash maintain your relationship with your mods? Mm. Ooh. Um, I would I would say for me, before anyone becomes a mod, it's it's somebody who who's consistent hanging out, being part of the community. Um, somebody I see that, you know, is yeah, you know, everyone wants a different kind of mod, right? Everybody, you know, uh, and so I can't only speak for me, is that you know, for me, I'd like somebody who's part of the community first knows the commands just by being around and right. uh, it's part of the discord and 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 that kind of stuff like not having to ask them to be a part of things is is a big thing so they actually care they're actually part of the community and then it kind of grows from there that's a good one yeah i'd say you want to look for the people that care about your stream like you do the people yeah. who are around as much as they can um, I consider my mods my friends and obviously you do make some mistakes sometimes you might mod someone and they end up not being a friend which happened recently to me but you, you never know it's hard with the with the internet internet um, no matter how some how long somebody's been around in your stream but you do want to have a level of trust as much as you can because they're really going to be a big part of your stream you they represent you so you want to make sure that if someone's talking in your channel if they're being mean to people um, that comes off on you um, so you, you do want to have um, a relationship with them where you, you can trust certain things that they do and help them, let them help you. Um, but I do want someone who's been around for a while mm. and can, can be around for a bit. And if you decide to, you know, have streams in the morning and in the evening, that might also change it too. Cause you might have someone who can only be around in the evening or only around in the morning and you might need to get another mod for, mm -hmm. for one of those as well. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think it's also important that uh, at least for me, that my mods are terrible typers. Like they type with their face 90% of the time because uh, that really <laughs> is just so great to see in chat. Um, neither, none of my mods can type sentences. Yeah. I'm not getting any sarcasm with that at all. I haven't seen that at all, ever. I don't no. know. <laughs> Man, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Um, but you know, we do actually have a weekly show about moderation and how to be a mod and how to improve as a mod tips and tricks. Uh, it's called behind the streams. It's on Tuesdays at, uh, 4 45 Eastern time. It is be run by two moderators. Uh, so if you guys like the topic of moderation, you should check out the show. It's, uh, tomorrow at 4 45 PM. Uh, it's, it's great stuff. Um, but other than that, that's all we have for today. We're going to do our shout outs. Before we go, and don't go anywhere, guys, because we have your brand, your business right after this. They're going to be talking about the economy and streaming, um, how the recent events are affecting streamers um, and that's content creators. A vital Ooh. one right now. Yeah, yeah, for vital. sure. Vital. So that's going to start Absolutely. right after this. Um, but before we do that, Ryan, Katie, thank you guys so much for joining us. Can we really appreciate it? Let us know where we can find you, Ryan, starting with you. And um, what, what are you up to? <laughs> Uh, so I am a variety caster through and through. We literally do play, I think, a different game at least every single day. I'm live Monday through Friday at the very least uh, from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, and, and then we do some bonus streams here and there. But uh, yeah, we have a focus mainly on a lot of story games and uh, just kind of riffing off that and making it kind of a mystery science theater 3000 kind of feel to everything. And then on Fridays, we've switched to being peer community days. So we every Friday now, we're playing either Twitch integration games or multiplayer doing light bears um, and, oh, and that right. kind of stuff. Yeah, it's, so every Friday, we, we uh, I grab as many of the community members that can fit into a Discord voice stream. It's chaos, and it's fun, and it's ridiculous, and we have a lot of fun doing it. Cool. That's awesome. I gotta remember that game. I somebody write that down. <laughs> yeah. Again, uh, anybody, light bears, uh, B E A R R. Bearers. Yeah, bearers. It's free to play on Steam. You can have up to sixteen people. It's like if you took Conquer Bad Fur Day, Slender Man, and Tag and smashed them together. It's amazing. Oh God! All right. Well, you can find me on <laughs> Twitter and Instagram and Twitter um i'm around on discord and twitter basically all day every day um <laughs> uh, i play a lot of different games right now we've got a seven days to die service.
going on and I've been playing uh, Animal Crossing as well. Um, I love doing community games. Look at you, Hunter. Lexi. <laughs> I love doing community games. I love <laughs> multiplayer games. Uh, I li I'm live Sunday, Monday, Tuesday at noon, but lately with the, the COVID stuff going on, I am doing a lot more streams, especially because I have out? to cool. go around my husband's schedule. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah, because he works 14 hours a day. He's that essential, you know, military employee. Is, so yeah. I don't want to be alone for 14 hours. So I'm like, yeah. guys, come and talk to me. So I've been live a lot more, but usually it's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday at noon, uh, mountain time zone. Please tell him thank you, by the way, for what he's the hard work that he's doing Absolutely. for us, please. Thank you so much. I will tell him that. Thank you. Um, um, I guess I, I, if I can add just one other thing, this week great. is Extra Life United week. So if you tune yes. in to Extra Life United on their channel uh, for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, starting at 7 p.m. Eastern time, they will be raising money uh, that will actually be going to help out COVID-19 through their children's hospitals and and uh, awesome. it's going to be a That's lot of fun. Work. That's wonderful. Yeah. You're going to be That's you're awesome. participating now, right? You I'm going to be one of the show hosts, uh, right. shout casting and all that kind of stuff. Yep, yep, yep. Right. Awesome. Uh, Hunter, what about you? So, okay, so what I was going to say is that somebody's cooking with onions somewhere in my building and I... It's <laughs> oh! It's uh, <laughs> profoundly distracting. <laughs> the Hunter Wild, you can find me on Twitch at Twitch.tv slash the Hunter Wild. On Twitter, it's got the extra TV at the end. So the at the Hunter Wild TV. Uh, stream four days a week, typically starting at 11 a.m. Pacific time. This week, it is all Mountain Blade to Banner Lord. Uh, I dipped into it for like eight minutes today when I was done talking for like three hours for my intro, my stream. Uh, you can also find me here every week alongside my good co-host. <laughs> <laughs> really? Uh, oh, <laughs> my, my other my okay titles, and you just said good. <laughs> my good, my wonderful, yeah. fantastic, inspiring, <laughs> understanding, patient, brilliant co-host Loco. Loco, what about you? Um, getting completely blown away by this hype train that's yeah. happening right now. It's at 420 percent. So I think we're good, oh right? We can stop there. Stop. 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 You guys. <laughs> thank you guys. <laughs> um, thank you everyone who is supporting Streamer Square. Uh me and Hunter do this and we provide free education for streamers. So we really appreciate you guys supporting our efforts. And um, if you guys like this stuff, you know, follow the channel because we have five regular shows and much more in the works. Uh, so yeah, we have a show literally right after this. Um, yep. so Me thank too. you guys for all the support and we are here every single Monday doing the stream scene. So thank you guys so much. Um, but yeah, you can find me at twitch.tv slash loco. Um, I don't know what I'm playing. Uh, doom final fantasy, um, comes out on Friday. I'm a variety streamer, so I pretty much play Love everything. <laughs> Yeah. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for ha having me on here. I really appreciate it. That's, yeah, thank you guys. Fun. Absolute oh. pleasure. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Same. So yeah, Thanks for tackling the Mondays with us for sure. Thanks, it's thanks been a Monday. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad it's I can Monday. help out. But also, was over. Some, some good good vibes and thoughts out to Ken. Yes. 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 Yeah. For yes. sure. We're hoping she's okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. husband, yeah. Absolutely. Um, so don't go anywhere because your brand, your business starts right now.